Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a late session update for Thursday, January 20th, 2022. I uh, wanted to get an update out to you guys uh, before the close today, so I'm starting this one now. It's 3.18 p.m. Eastern Time. and uh, So here's what's happened today since that update this morning. We did, as expected, go on to break out above the uh, bullish falling wedge patterns. I'll show you all those real quick. Here's QQQ. We'll zoom in nice and tight. You can see the breakout, green candle. Uh, follow through and pretty much stopped at about the bottom of the bounce target range. You know, we had the gap from uh, a Tuesday's gap right there, which actually it's almost perfect. That's the top of this this red candle right here, the body of that candle, and that's uh, just about exactly where we stopped. That one level was, uh, yeah, I'll tell you right now. Uh, click on the candle pop up box as that candle closed at uh, 373.75. And the high of the day today was uh, 373.87. So, all right, so that's it. So we hit the mountain targets. And look, they just stepped in hard. Uh, and so far, it's caused. Now, again, I want to get the video out before the close. I'd prefer to wait to the end of the day and give you complete analysis because they could step in and buy it here. And they're basically just double testing that, that recent low and send it higher. That's certainly a possibility. Still anybody's game. But so far, you can see the PPO had made that bullish cross. Remember, I talked about this, I think it was yesterday. And it's got rejected. It already made a bearish cross. Uh, still anyone's game because we're still right there. The divergences are still very much intact. And even a slight marginal new low will keep them intact. But uh, as of now, we have a false breakout, a.k.a. bull trap. And uh, so I wanted to point that out. And it, this, you know, if they can't rally this today, and here's the tough part, guys. By the time I get the video out to you guys, it's going to be close to uh, the closing bell. I'll have it out hopefully a little before that. And even, you know, if we park anywhere around here, a little lower, a little higher, they're still in proximity where they can still defend that support level. Those key supports that we're at were slightly below. But honestly, I, I, if you, I always give you my opinion, right or wrong. I think this will be it. I think that'll that'll do the trick. You know, I uh, like I said today, in my active trading account, I went long. Wrote it up, made a little bit, and then reversed there. Got a pull back, and then went back in, and then lost. So I really washed out. I lost a little more on the second day trade than the uh, first one uh, going long, and uh, I'm I'm back short. Uh, unless anything big happens today. Now here's the thing. What's big? What will help? Bulls need to now get it above today's candle. I think that's going to be an, at least near-term bullish. And look, you still have the resistance. Remember, this is the gap uh, that I'm talking about from uh, Monday's high down to uh, the open on Tuesday. And that's still resistance. We failed at the bottom of the gap pretty impulsively, too. And that's, again, why I want to do the video. It just shows you that sellers are just lurking in the dark in the shadows and selling at any, the, the, even the earliest of resistance levels. Um, so as of now, you know, I view that as bearish and it's probably going to do the trick to get us to break those uh, floodgates, I call them, uh, the recent lows and start the next wave of impulsive selling. Uh, kind of fundamental thing, potential. The Senate today, I just got a headline uh, from the journal that Senate panel approved the uh, antitrust bill, uh, which is to restrict big tech platforms, you know, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Again, that's that's not passed yet, but it's you know you're looking at a, a pretty you know hostile f uh, fundamental environment right now for the market, uh, you know because as I said, big tech, te big tech, the fangs are the market. They they make up such a large weighting of the indexes, and there's just no way uh, that you're going to see you know big tech go down and the stock market go up. So all right, let me get to the others, and I'll just and a couple other trade ideas for you, and we'll wrap it up. So there's spy. I mean, look at it again. Same chart you got this morning. There's your bullish falling wedge. There was a breakout. Looked good. And um, even a little shy. And that's why I always watch both indexes. It was QQQ that hit the bottom. There's the gap on SPY. So we reversed a little shy of it. And so we're back inside the trend line, but by a relatively small margin. By the time this candle closes, we could we could bounce. It could simply be a back test. And if so, you still have the same resistance levels overhead that I covered before. But again... The impulsive reversal of it, and just based on where we were, my whole thing about the, you know, the the warning signs right now um, in the market, uh, tell me that you know be on guard for this. And this is the kind of stuff you see. Uh, we're seeing a change of character in the market. The dip buyers are are you know um, not being rewarded as they have been for for many uh, many months now. Um, by you know, stepping in and buying the dip, especially at key support like this. All right, uh, a couple more index charts, and we'll look at the futures, and then move on to some other trade ideas. And again, I'm going to keep this brief. 
in order to get out. That's what it looks like on NQ. Same thing, you can see the breakout. And the first uh, resistance level right here is about 15.30, about 15.10. Uh, minor resistance and again it was the bottom of the gap on QQQ that did the trick and so that's where we're at now so it's not over for the bulls but you know that smackdown after the breakout uh, and that's clearly a failed breakout you can see we're well back into the wedge uh, just doesn't bode well for the uh, technical picture and, and uh, only helps the uh, case for the bearish uh, you know, scenario let's uh, up uh, what's up next ES I'm looking for that one here we go there's another, you know, pretty aggressive uh, smackdown, uh, nice clean breakout, and just no follow-up, no buyers to be had on the other side of the breakout. So it was a technical event. Other traders saw the same thing I did and said, hey, you know what, if you're an active trader, you can go long and just either trail it up or try to game the, the bounce, uh, you know, the, the, the move up. But uh, as I made clear this morning, swing trader is your best ride out, and that's why if you don't do this, full time and you're not you know very nimble and in front of a computer all the time with multiple monitors watching a lot of different things uh it's almost impossible and so you're better off staying short you're back to where basically where you were yesterday and that's after a pretty you know pretty healthy uh, bounce there all righty uh and let's not remember let me look at the daily charts and we'll move on i'll get away from the indexes um you know you had things like this morning uh, excuse me iwm i pointed out had broken down and uh had not recovered was simply back testing that 2850 level look at that uh there's a candle that red means we reverse you can see the the skinny part there that's the shadow or when it's above you call the shadow the wick the wick means we popped that made a perfect back test and rejected so far so this is now day two well there's technically speaking day one we close below uh, we got a pretty good confirming candle yesterday. That'd be day two of the breakdown and, and a check mark for sure. This one was questionable because it was only so low. And now this is day three. And um, yeah, we still have the divergence, everything I pointed out. But again, I talked about it. These divergences can and often will, especially in this kind of scenario, get burned through. Just like if you're shorting every negative divergence in a strong bull trend, uh, it ain't going to work. You know, a lot of those divergences are going to just uh, not end up uh, getting confirmed. Or if they do get confirmed, you get a little pullback. And then you get the next leg up in the security you're trading and the divergences are taken out. So that's in reverse uh, if you get a, a bearish trend. So uh iwm i still like i made it clear that's one of my favorites for you know swing position and yeah there'll be little stops along the way a uh, little hiccups most likely but uh, i think you can sit tight and, and ride that one down with the appropriate stops you know if you shorted it wherever you shorted it it's been multiple short entries from been mentioned here uh just you know give it a fat trailing stop at this point Really, IWM has no business in getting back up well within the channel. Well within means a little pop if it back tests again, but really about that 215 level right here, that white line, uh, it, it shouldn't stay. It shouldn't get above that. Otherwise, something else is going on uh, from what I see. And then QQQ, somebody brought this up on the, um, uh, on the uh, comment section today. And I, you know, I should have mentioned, I should have updated for ever in a day since we even before we got sell signals back here months ago, you know, a month or two months ago, I've uh, in multiple occasions stated, uh, you know, I had uh, some of my initial targets weren't just price levels. They were the 200 day moving averages. Uh, I talked about how well those work on the tech heavy index like the NASDAQ 100. And that's what happened today. We came down there and the buyer stepped in. Now we're out. Now we're at the 200 uh, exponential. You can see they come in together. Blue line is a simple red is the exponential we're there so we had a little bounce and so far they sold that bounce so that was uh close enough to be the initial tag look we're there now uh but again you guys know my targets i think as i said before those are just a little hiccup along the way targets are still you know 360 probably get a bounce but this is the target i maintain if you just don't want to get all whipsawed in the noise and i try to speak to the trend or swing trader versus the active trader uh, if you're sitting tight uh you know hold your nose jump in the water and uh set the appropriate stops so you don't lose your tail if it goes up you know new highs and uh, hold out for that target zone or you know trade off these weekly targets here uh, and or both a uh, quick update on lumber uh at that first target now 1178.55 ish right there and i fully it's a solid the breakdown's well intact now 
and uh, this one I think will go considerably lower. Uh, I think we can at, at minimum, minimum again, if the stock market really, really starts to get hit, if we can just get a little more downside, a little more nudge uh, down there, 3% or more, that should seal the deal in the market and then lumber, hot air will come out of lumber. I have another chart, but I, this video, if I go and dig up that chart now, I didn't have it already queued up. It just shows you the S&P 500 against lumber prices and how the major tops and bottom uh, also, you know, talks about shows a positive correlation and how uh, at the major turns in the market you usually get a turn in lumber as well. So lumber like crude oil, which I'll get to next, has been holding up. But crude starting to crack. This is my 60-minute uh, chart. I've been showing you here. I gave you the other day. I had a minor trend line. I told you it would trigger sell signal one. That was this trend line here. That's your minor trend line. Uh, I'll make it yellow so you can see it in the video. And that one broke down yesterday, back tested, back tested again while it was bouncing off the primary trend line. And as of now, for the first time in quite a while, boom, sell signal in crude oil. Uh, targets remain, minimum target there, 83.25. I could certainly and probably will add some additional targets. But again, I'm doing kind of a longer term view now uh, with more and more evidence we're getting uh, for the big drop that I'm looking for in the markets. And uh, yeah, it would be extremely unusual to see crude continue up i know what's going on in the middle east and all that or in russia you know the ukraine and uh i'm not concerned about that again how much of that's already priced into what's here again all i can trade off is, is the uh, charts i can i do factor in technicals but if you sit there and try to trade off te uh, fundamentals meaning reading the news and the headlines to me it's akin to driving in the rearview mirror you know, uh, looking backwards because a lot of times that news has already been factored in. Uh, so uh, anyway, I'll get to crude later. I just want to tell you, sell signal there. Uh, sugar, 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 where'd it go? It took a short on sugar today. I need to find the futures for you. Uh, this chart here, uh, again, is probably the easiest uh, buy and sell indicators. I'm a little ahead on this one. I jumped ahead of it because we had a trend line here that broke a little near-term uptrend line. And, and usually... The uh, sell signals are inevitable. Once the PPO turns down, I'm referring to it right here. Uh, I have for sell signals the red lines, and those are the bearish PPO crossovers. I've covered this a lot in the past. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but all I look for are high-level bearish PPO crossovers. If you can get a full tag of 86, 20, 275 level, great, but you don't always. If not, it's nice to see a little divergence there. So uh, you just follow these these you know circles up, these sell signals I'm showing you, and I have buy signals in reverse. And uh, even if they're just for short-term trades, you only get a few percentage points, great. And I'm um, learning now you can almost trend trade it, get the sell signal, ride it out until you get the next buy signal down on the bottom. Or, or once that PPO starts turning up and you start approaching that level. Or, of course, if you have trend lines, price resistance, support, things like that. And CANE and SGG are your ETNs for sugar. Uh, treasury bonds, being patient, sitting tight on treasuries. This is ZB, the uh, long bond, uh, means the 30-year treasury bond. You have that nice clean down trend line and now a pretty pretty good support level here at 154.200 that I believe will do the trick. So if you can pop 154.200 on ZB, uh, you can trade it. TLT is the uh, treasury ETF. There's also a leveraged one in there as well, but uh, you're going to get treasuries don't move as much as... Uh, stocks so you're probably better using the leverage afforded you by uh futures and uh that's it there's a reaction there uh um i'll give you targets if uh if we break out or i'll follow up in another video right now um I'll tell you probably uh, just eyeball on this chart and give you a minimum swing target not make it too complicated there i think we'll come up to about that 157.094 minimum and bitcoin i keep uh, meaning to do an update on Bitcoin. These are the January uh, contracts. We're about to roll into the February, so you keep that in mind. I just this is the chart I had marked up. Still holding that low. I mean, this is major support. So as long as it holds that low, maybe a breakout. We had one little whipsaw there, and um, I um, still maintain the same targets. I've covered this one a lot. So there's not much to update other than the fact it's still recently it's coming off a divergent low. It's just so far not not taken off. But uh, again, one of many things and you beta just down bitcoin moves so much if you take it whether you use gbtc the bitcoin trust i've also covered ethereum i have the same thoughts there uh you know put put smaller amounts because those are more speculative or aggressive trades all right let me wrap it up now so i can get the video out to you guys uh, before the close this has been randy finney with right side of the chart have a great day